Hello, um, welcome to my talk. Um, my name is uh, Venkat Guruswamy. I'm uh, a theoretical computer scientist and coding theorist in the computer science department at Carnegie Mellon University. So today I'll be talking about um, erasure codes, which are used for, uh, um, as they are used in, co in distributed storage and cloud storage. Okay, so today we all store massive amounts of data on the, the cloud and this data is uh, typically split across many servers and stored uh, on many servers. And obviously we don't want to lose our data, whereas periodically servers uh, can and do fail or go down. So um, the solution to this is to not to store our data in, in, the, uh, in an unredundant form, but actually add redundancy and store it in a coded form. And classic methods called erasure coding allows us to recover our data even in the case when many servers might go down. And in fact, a very classic solution uh, for this is something called um, a maximum distance separable code. It's basically an optimal form of erasure coding. So here you can imagine your data is, let's say, K symbols long, the message M1 through MK, and you encode it into a coded form, C1 through CN, and N is going to be typically bigger than uh, K. And you do it in a manner which is quite striking uh, in an MDS code, uh, clearly you have K chunks of data in your message. So you need to at least access K of these stored uh, nodes, CIs to recover your data. But uh, in an MDS code, you have this guarantee that any K out of these N uh, code word symbols or which I will equivalently call storage nodes uh, with idea of the storage application allow you to recover the full data. And this is clearly optimal because if you access less than K, there is no chance for you to recover all the K symbols of information. And uh, on the other hand, um, it's great that uh, any K will do. Put another way, out of these N uh, nodes, N minus K of them can fail and yet any of the remaining K will allow you to recover data. And this is great because this is the optimal trade-off between um, storage overhead and erasure to uh, tolerance. You cannot correct, uh, recover from more failures for this level of uh, storage overhead. And this is actually utilized in uh, conventional storage systems all over the place, including CDs and hard disks and, and so on, and as well as some communication uh, applications. Okay, but in the um, cloud storage or distributed storage context, um, because there are so many servers and there's tons of data, uh, one of the things which happens often is that one of the nodes, uh, just a single node just goes down or gets repaired. Another thing which can also happen is that you might have two parties who want to both access the contents on a particular node in a distributed or cloud storage system. And then one of them that's called degraded access and one of them is able to get the data and the other one um, uh, has to wait. So in a context like this, uh, and a very interesting question is how, how do we um, efficiently repair or access either the lost content or the blocked content, okay? So that's the, the, the node repair problem. How do you act, you know, when one node goes down or is inaccessible, what do you do with it? Okay, so in a sense, this is not a big deal because your storage system is uh, designed in a way to tolerate lots of erasures or failures. So one failure is no big deal. So you could decode the entire uh, original information and recover the single lost part C1. But this clearly seems very wasteful because you have lost only one symbol C1, can we recover it in a more efficient way? And that is actually the important node repair problem in coding for distributed storage, which I want to tell you something about. Okay, so we would like to efficiently repair this missing node. And uh, so you just want to recover what is missing or what is needed. And an important question then is what is our measure of efficiency? Clearly, we don't want to recover the full data. Um, so two measures have uh, been really used a lot in the uh, literature and in practice. One is locality. So here you say that in order to recover this uh, particular um, uh, code word C1, you um, minimize the number of other code word symbols you access. So this is called locality. And the idea being that you, if you contact fewer nodes, uh, there may be less latency and so on. So I'll come back to this. And the, the other notion, uh, which is very popular uh, is repair bandwidth. So here you say that you want to recover C1, you minimize the amount of content you download from the other servers in order to be able to repair or recover C1. And this is called repair bandwidth. And this also has a long line of work. And both of these works, were initiated about 10 to 12 years ago and uh, interest in them and uh, results and uh, uh, practical adoption has really exploded since. So these are uh, really important uh, topics um, in um, fault tolerant crowd storage these days. 
And first I'll talk about the repair bandwidth and then towards the end of the talk, I'll talk about uh, locality and hopefully I'll have time to um, cover both of these, uh, at least give you a glimpse. I won't do any proofs or any details, but I'll just tell you some uh, snippets of key results. Okay, so let's come back to this node repair problem. Um, so if you use an MDS code and let's say the first symbol C1 uh, goes missing, then um, the MDS property actually in a way works against you because the fact that any K nodes suffice to recover the full message actually um, also shows uh, that if you contact less than K code blocks, they actually will carry no information whatsoever about C1. Okay, so in some sense, you will have absolutely no locality. You really have to, uh, and here I should say that in these applications, K should be thought of as kind of big compared to N. We're pretty close to N because we don't want to, we are storing like, you know, huge amounts of data. So we don't want to add too much redundancy. So K is basically like N, N minus some small constant, let's say. So you really have to, if you contact fewer of them, then you don't get any information. So surprisingly, if you contact more than K code blocks, and you download not them in entirety, but some parts of them, then you can gain over this naive scheme, which will simply download K code blocks in full and recover C1. And in fact, the entire, it also allows you to recover the entire um, set C1 through CN, which is clearly wasteful. And how might you do this? This is uh, somewhat surprising and counterintuitive. Um, and uh, a good illustration of this is a simple code called the even odd code. And what this is, is that it's a code with K equals two and N equals four here, simple example. And each code symbol is consists of two bits. So it's a vector of length two, two bits. Okay, so that's, and let's say the message symbols are A1, A2 and B1, B2. And then you store two other parity nodes, A1 plus B1 and A2 plus B2, and this is the other parity. So a parity node is just take some linear combination of your message content. And suppose the first node goes down, you need to recover A1 and A2. You can contact any of two of these other nodes and download both of their bits for a total of four bits. And that will allow you to recover A1 and A2. But if you look at this example, if you just download the top half of each of these nodes, that itself is enough to download a, get recover A1 and A2 because you can cancel B1 to get A1 and you can cancel B1 to get A, uh, A2 as well. So by download just in one bit out of these three nodes, you're able to um, recover uh, this content. And the same holds for every other node as well. So if you look at um, uh, S2, if this is lost B1 and B2, you just download uh, A2, A2 plus B2 and A2 plus B1, and that will allow you to recover this. And P1 is similar. And let's look at P2. Suppose you want to recover these two uh, sums. The way you can do it is you can download A2 from S1, B1 from S2, and from P1, you can actually download the sum of these two things. And then you can check that using these values, you can recover um, what the particular linear combinations which are stored at P2. And the reason I want to bring this up to is to illustrate the important point that these nodes can uh, serve any linear combination of the contents they store. And this is allowed and uh, very powerful in the model. Okay, and this is, uh, gives you a glimpse and note that here only three bits are downloaded whereas a naive scheme would download four bits. On the other hand, the naive scheme would only contact two nodes. Here you've contacted all the three remaining nodes. And, uh, and this is really the idea behind uh, uh, optimizing the repair bandwidth. So just to a little bit more formally, you have these nodes, each of which uh, coded nodes, which each of which stores alpha symbols and one of them goes down. And to recover that node, you download, let's say beta i symbols from the ith uh, node and uh, if you're able to recover C1 by doing so, then the repair bandwidth, which is your total download, is simply the summation of all the beta i's. That's the total number of bits you download. Okay, and really the question then becomes, what is the minimum possible repair bandwidth you might have for a given storage system? And the regenerating codes are exactly constructions which are optimized for the subject. Okay, and that's uh, our regenerating codes are optimized for repair bandwidth. And what might you be able to do? So let's say the redundancy of the coded system is NR, which is N minus K, because you have K message uh, symbols and N coded symbols. And let's say each coded symbol is alpha, uh, alpha symbols long. There is a relatively simple argument you can show using the MDS property of the code that in order to recover C1, you need to download a total information. Note that C1 is just alpha symbols, but to recover it, you need to actually download more than alpha symbols and how much more you need to download n minus one 
by r factor more symbols in order to recover alpha that's the least you can uh, you you can achieve and the only way to achieve this optimal bound is if you exactly download alpha by r from each of the remaining n minus 1 nodes okay that's the only way you can achieve this so each node stores alpha and it serves a 1 over r fraction of it and the first node collects all this and then you can um, or or the repair algorithm collects all this and then it can repair the first node c1 and the same is true whether any node c ci gets lost okay that's a lower bound that's a limitation but uh, perhaps uh, remarkably there is this whole class of codes called minimum storage regenerating codes abbreviated as msr codes which actually give constructions uh, which achieve this and what is an msr code it, first of all it's a it's an mds code where every code word symbol can be regenerated or repaired by downloading exactly the optimal alpha by r symbols from every other node and this meets the cut set bound this is the best you can achieve and these msr codes are codes which achieve this optimality and by now there are many clever ingenious constructions of msr codes uh, but one drawback all of them have is that they all have high sub packetization or this alpha symbols which you have to store at each node is really tends to be very big and the best known is something like r to the n over r and really you should think of r the redundancy as small and n as kind of big so these are exponentially big in the size of the system which is uh, um, not good in particular large sub packetization actually put differently limits the size of the system like n can be at most log alpha and it also really complicates the maintenance of metadata and other things um, to deal with the system so it's really not desirable and this is one of the reasons uh, these msr codes uh, are not deemed uh, that practical but of course this is just the best known constructions so it's natural and important to wonder can you actually do even better and unfortunately we showed um, a couple of years back that for an msr code this large exponentially large sub packetization is actually not an artifact of existing constructions but it's actually inherent uh, and specifically what we showed with omar al rabia um, is that um, the sub packetization has to be exponential in k by r which is almost uh, matches the known constructions so that's bad news that's uh, on the other hand uh, the good news is that this lower bound is very in, in a way it's very brittle it comes because an msr code is a very rigid object if you slightly relax what you are allowed to do you can actually achieve much smaller sub packetization so in fact in in work which preceded this with ravat tamo and efremenko what we showed was that if you download instead of alpha by r symbols from each other node a little bit more a 1 plus epsilon factor more where epsilon can be as small as you want then you can do the repair efficiently and further the sub packetization only needs to be logarithmic in the size of the system so this is a huge improvement it's sort of a doubly exponential uh, jump uh, reduction and all you have to give is that a small percentage extra download okay so this also shows that sometimes it's good to uh, look at slightly suboptimal solutions for the sake of substantial efficiency um, uh, gains which is a very prevalent theme in approximation and heuristics and here it's applied to codes for storage okay so that's uh, um, the first part of the talk and now i want to um, talk about the other part as i said there are two ways in which you can do efficient node repair so we talked about minimizing the total amount of downloaded information but the drawback here is that you had to contact a lot of nodes maybe all the other nodes the other extreme is something called locality where you minimize the number of nodes which you contact in order to repair uh, your node okay and um, and that's called locally repairable codes which i'm going to talk about uh, in the remaining um, few minutes okay okay so what's the idea of local node repair so the idea is that when you want to repair c1 you do this repair by contacting only a small number of other nodes okay so this um, let's call this uh, number r so you're only going to uh, contact r of these nodes so here i've illustrated like three you know and then you combine their contents in some way and then you're able to recover c1 and this locality should be thought of as much smaller than k or n okay and uh, what are the advantages of this well first of all you're contacting few uh, few of the existing servers and waiting for a response so this naturally uh, reduces the latency um, and also you know sort of network effects and so on and also the computation you have to do to recover c1 or the lost content is also 
better because you now are only combining few things. So it's a sparse linear combination which you're taking, so that can be efficient. And perhaps the most uh, interesting and important thing here is that these kinds of codes uh, optimized to various settings are uh, already deployed and used in cloud storage systems. Um, for example, um, a lot of variants of these were discovered in Microsoft Research and they have deployed in Microsoft Azure Storage. They're also implemented in Hadoop and so on. So this is a lot of beautiful theory here, but also goes hand in hand with uh, actual practical uh, use every day. Um, but the price to pay for locality uh, is that the code cannot be this optimal MDS property. Because remember, I said that an MDS code has this property that if you contact fewer than K things, you get no information about C1. So you, and here I actually want to recover C1 by contacting very few nodes. So in particular, it won't have the optimal erasure resilience, the global erasure resilience um, of correcting a really large number of failures in catastrophic settings. So given this situation, the goal then becomes balancing a balancing act. You want to have this strong locality, but subject to this locality, you want to maximize the global uh, failure or erasure resilience. So you want to be able to correct a lot of erasures uh, should some catastrophic things happen, but now you're constrained by your locality requirement, so you cannot achieve this N minus K. So in this setting, what can you actually achieve? Uh, so a fundamental bound by uh, Gopal and Huang, Schmidt, Ki, and Yakanin um, in 2011 or so, which really sort of spurred a lot of work on um, these locally repairable codes, abbreviated as LRC, said, said that if you want to have R local recovery, so you recover a symbol using R other symbols, then you can't quite correct N minus K erasures. You have to back off from that bound by a quantity like K minus one by R. So you, you know, so as R is smaller and smaller, you have to back off from that bound. And this is very reminiscent of something called the singleton bound in coding theory. And this is the singleton bound for LRCs. And uh, there are actually codes which were discovered um, um, called pyramid codes. And uh, these are actually heavily uh, used as well, uh, which actually achieve this. Uh, so the idea here in the pyramid codes is that you take your message symbols and you block them into chunks of size R. And for each of those uh, chunks, you compute a local parity check. Okay, you say XOR these uh, symbols. And that produces a local parity check and you have about K or R of these groups. I've just assumed for simplicity R divides K here. And that's going to give you locality for all the message symbols. And in order to get global fault tolerance, now this is not so good because if inside a local group, I lose two symbols, like let's say I lose M1 and M2, I've lost everything. I've lost my uh, uh, fault tolerance property. So obviously you want to protect against more than uh, one failure which can happen in bad cases. So you add an additional H heavy or global parities which kind of combine all this information together. And uh, that's how the code looks. And uh, in a certain way, if you'd write a certain matrix associated with the code, it looks like a pyramid. It's called pyramid codes. And these codes have this nice property that um, you can always correct a single message symbol going or going missing very quickly just inside a local group. For example, if you lose M2, you simply take M1 through MR, the other MIs, and then um, P1 and XOR them and you will recover M2. And that's great. So that's very efficient. On the other hand, the extra parities also allow you to recover any H global erasures, which gives you global fault tolerance uh, for a more number of failures. And these are pyramid codes. And uh, it's not hard to see that they exactly achieve this uh, kind of trade-off. But one uh, point here is that they allow locality only for the message symbols. So if one of the parity nodes goes missing, which is also important because the parity nodes is what gives you fault tolerance, then it doesn't quite give you a way to do a local recovery. And that's what all symbol locality does. So in an all symbol locality setting, um, you, you take your message things, which I've indicated in green here, and you compute these parity checks, H heavy parity checks, which are these PIs. And now you bunch all of them together into local groups of size. Uh, here I've said R is the size of the group. And there's also one more parameter here is that, you know, you can also imagine instead of correcting locally one erasure, you might say, hey, I would like to correct two erasures or three erasures. You can make that a parameter A and that's what is done here. Okay. And, um, and if you want to construct such a code, you can take random linear combinations over very large fields and it will have this property, but uh, this is not practical. You would like explicit constructions and you would also like the field size to be small. And this is exactly what uh, celebrated construction of Tamo and Barg achieved. They actually took what are called Reed-Solomon codes, a very classic form of MDS codes, 
and they took some sub codes it's a smaller subset of those um so in some sense it adds effectively adds some extra redundancy but somehow miraculously they orchestrated an algebraic miracle of sorts to ensure locality so they got locality plus optimal fault tolerance and now here you get locality for not just the message symbols but all the symbols and i should mention that both the gopal and ital work and tamo bark work are celebrated works with uh, winning uh, major awards and there's been lots of impact and follow ups for both of these works okay so i'm kind of getting towards the end of my talks so i'll just mention one uh, other notion i um, sort of flashed before called maximal recoverability so here let's take the same setting of a locally repairable code and um, in a local repairable code you you set your global fault tolerance so you say that what is the maximum number of erasures so that every pattern of that erasure i can correct and you optimize that but there might be some erasure patterns which are even more failures but because of the way they are distributed they are correctable so a maximal recoverable code tries to take advantage of this so it tries to get you the most bang for your buck subject to your local locality which are these local groups as illustrated here it would you would want to have a single code which can correct all the failure or erasure patterns which one can information theoretically ever hope to correct given these locality constraints okay and that takes uh, um, and in this particular topology or a structure of the parity checks it turns out you can correct up to a erasures in a local group because that's what the local groups are um, um, designed to tolerate and you can have an additional h failures or erasures spread anywhere at all in your code word and you can still recover so that is possible such maximal recoverable codes exist and uh, and clearly these are of significant practical importance because they really allow you to correct as many uh, failures as possible all patterns which are consistent with your locality uh, unfortunately the most natural constructions one can think of require very large fields and there has been a lot of work using many different techniques aimed at uh, constructing these over small alphabets or fields and um, so a very recent work uh, which we did with the gopi and there also um, building on previous work by martin spenas and shishang and also uh, independently done by uh, kai et al essentially gives the best known uh, field size in many possible regimes there are lots of parameters here n r a and all that so depending on each choice one construction or the better but this one is more or less uh, the dominant one in many settings i won't go through the bound here but it's it's just some bound which is optimized and the thing i want to point out is that this uses uh, something called skew polynomials a very intriguing non commutative uh, analog of uh, uh, polynomials okay so i think that's uh, essentially all i wanted to say so let me summarize so erasure codes basically coding solutions where you lose some symbols and you can recover them uh, efficiently are a very classic subject they go back basically to the birth of coding theory in the 50s and you know late 40s on the other hand so they're very natural to use in um, storage systems to uh, deal with lost symbols or uh, lost nodes but their use in cloud storage raises many novel challenges and these challenges are great because they're practically significant significant at the same time the mathematical questions they raise are extremely interesting and also really raise some fundamental issues in coding theory so that synergy is really quite fascinating and there has been lots of progress in the last decade uh, on constructions of these codes optimizing these objectives and i basically gave you a very small bird's eye glimpse of that and uh, there's lots and lots more work here uh, and despite all that some basic challenges still remain and uh, so there is i think more work to be done um, uh one thing is this maximal recoverable code still remain a mystery in terms of can you do much smaller field size and perhaps uh, obviously just as important is increased practical usage of these codes uh, lrcs are already um, used in cloud storage systems further practical deployment of these uh, re regenerating codes would also be nice and uh, so so there's lots of uh, more work to be done on both the theoretical and practical side Okay. So with that, let me um, end my talk, and uh, I, I thank you uh, for your attention. And if you want to find more information, you can look at any of the papers I mentioned here, or just uh, Google for uh, codes for distributed storage, or locally repairable codes, or um, uh, regenerating codes, and you can find a lot more information. Okay. Uh, thanks again for your attention.